and I want to, to go straight to the word because we are going to do a few things. And the topic I've been given is assurance of God's love. And you know what I know about assurance is that when things are right, you don't need to be assured that you're loved. When we need assurance is when we are going through stuff in our lives. And when we are passing through those things, because we are assured because we might doubt. I don't know what you're here and uh, going through right now. I don't know why you need God's assurance at this time. But the truth is, at every uh, time in our lives, there comes a time when we need an assurance. Because we are asking ourselves, does God really love me? Does God really care? And the scripture I want us to read is this. First Corinthians 10, 12 to 13. And this is what the Bible says. In the NIV. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. And no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. It is during those difficult times in our lives, those unpleasant, unexpected, unplanned experiences that we need God's assurance. In verse 12, it says when you think you are standing firm. In our view, the flaw sometimes gets removed. I don't know whether you've been through an experience. When you feel like you are standing somewhere and then the flaw was removed under you. And you are falling in a dark hole where you can't see where you are going. And the fall is so desperate that you don't understand at what point will you land and how will you land. And if I tell you that I have reached, I will be lying. I'm still in that dark tunnel falling and I don't know where I'll stand. In case you missed me on TV, I have a clip. So you might as well be lucky that you're being spoken to by a celebrity today. And there is a clip where I, I featured on TV. Derek Masharia Gedenji was knocked down to death by a Boda Boda just days before his graduation at Daystar University. Well, today his family and friends gathered at their rural home in Muranga for his final send off. Much as they deliberately steered off delving into the details of how he died, the emotions and subtle undertones told a lot. Charity Mwangi reports that the reality of road carnage on account of Boda Bodas remains true. I would like to ask the parent not to come and speak, but just to come forward. Laden with joy that sat under a cloud of sorrow, Teresia Nyambura boldly walked up the podium at Deista University to receive a Bachelor of Arts degree certification in electronic media on behalf of her son, Derek Masharia Givinji, who passed away five days prior to the much-awaited graduation day. <laughs> Four days after the day of the black robes of honor to a black day for Derek's family and friends. But his bright personality denied the darkness to reign at his burial.
one time i would tell him when you start growing abroad unilete nguo unilete nguo za designer and then he would say mimi nijipate kwa duka nikiitisha nguo za kamama kafupi karound <laughs> His humor spread to his passion in his faith and his desire to help his peers. One of the ways he would witness is finding makangas who used to chew mira and he would say hi to them and tell them niaje nebs and nobody would get what the nebs was eh? and then it was nebukadineza by the way eh? <laughs> Nonetheless there are moments of sadness He told me his favorite slogan was, it's never too serious. But his death was serious and sudden. He was allegedly killed by a border border rider who knocked him over while he was crossing the road on his way to the shop to buy household items for his family. This highlights the concerns raised about border border operators seemingly operating with impunity. Impunity that will steal a promising man's shine. Derek will never get to practice his craft as a media practitioner, but his passion never went unnoticed. His desire was to script and create animations for children. Derek is one among many who've met their death on account of what can be viewed as recklessness by border border operators oblivious of the suffering they leave behind. Maybe, just maybe, his death may spark the need to regulate this emerging transport industry. Charity Wangi, NTV. Thank you, media team. You're in a torch, huh? And I want to ask, how many of us in the last two years have gone through something so devastating that it made you doubt God exists? So I want us to see whether I'm in good company here. If in the last two years you have lost a close relative, a child, a husband, a mother, a sister, a brother, please stand up. If in the last two years you have lost a job, a business, has closed down. Please stand up and Kama miaka mbili imepita umepoteza biashara yako ama kitu kibaya kama hicho simama pia. If in the last 2 years you have lost a relationship, miaka mbili separation. If in the last 2 years you have lost a friend, you just fell out with that friend and it left you feeling devastated, please stand up. Miaka miwili imepita umekuwa na kutalakiwa, kutalikiwa na umepoteza pengine mtu wa rafiki yako wa karibu. If in the last two years you have lost an opportunity, maybe an entrance to a college, a university, a job that you expected you would get, please join us and stand up. Kama umepoteza fulsa fulani, pengine ulikuwa uingia chuo fulani, ukapoteza hiyo fulsa, simama. If in the last two years you have applied for a visa to the US and it was denied, Kama miaka mbili mepita uliuliza, please stand up. Katuma maombi kapewe visa, wakakata simama pia. If you have lost your health in the last two years Kama and got into a time where you needed medical help and medical and your own drugs at one point please join us Kama umepoteza afya yako ukaingia kipindi cha kutumia madawa tu jumuika na sisi And I'm looking at all of us who are standing and thinking was in tita time that you felt where is God and if you really, really love me, why am I going through this? So before you sit down, just turn and tell your neighbor who is standing, you're not alone. Kabla ujaketi, ambia jirani yako ya kwamba huko peke yako. Huko peke yako. Jumi mtafisiru wangu wa niambiu, simu niambie. Thank you, thank you. Now, we may take our seats. The things we have been through are common to mankind. That mambo. is what the scripture we have read tells Bibi us. From the days of the Bible to now, 
kutoka siku za Biblia mpaka wakati huu. I'm not the first person to lose a child. Naomi lost two plus a husband. Uh, kuna wengine wamepoteza watoto. Si mimi si wa kwanza Naomi alipoteza wawili na hata bwana yake. You are not the first person to lose employment. Si. David was sacked by his son from his kingship. Ah, uh, sio wewe wa kwanza kufutwa kazi hata Daudi alifutwa na mtoto wake. You are not the first person to be disgraced and to be dumped. Sio wewe wa kwanza kukataliwa. Tamara was uh, robbed of her virginity by her brother and thrown out to disgrace. Tamara aliweza How about Uria? He lost his wife and his life to David. Ana Uria aliweza kuawa na yule Daudi. And we can go on and on because what God is saying is what you have gone through. What you're going through, you're not the first person to go through. Tunaweza endelea kwa sababu Mungu anasema hayo umepitia. Very devastating things tend to happen just when you think you are standing firm. This is what the Bible is telling. Mambo magumu sana yanatendeka wakati unafikiria umesimama imara. I'm thinking Rachel was there thinking, here I am now. After crying, after being humiliated by Leah, now finally. Raeli alikuwa anafikiria sasa nimefika. Ah, kafikiria kwamba nimepata mtoto nimedhulumiwa sana nimedhiakiwa sana sasa mtoto amefika and then she dies before she could breastfeed her second baby ah, kakufa kabla hajaweza kunyonyesha mtoto wake and then Naomi has ran Nani? she has left a land of famine akaenda akafikiria sasa nimefika ndio huku chakula watoto wangu hawatalala njaa tena ndio hawa sasa watoto wangu wameoa i am doing well Naomi alikuwa anafikiria kwamba mimi nimetorokea njaa nimefika huko watoto wangu wameo mimi niko salama. And just then. Na wakati huo huo. She loses the husband, she loses the children. Bwana wake akafa watoto wake. Job at the peak of his life. Uh, when he was so spiritually alert, ndio huyo anaomba mpaka anaamka kuombea watoto wake dhambi wanaweza kuwa walitenda. The Bible records that he was so blessed that the enemy was saying, sasa huyu mtu atakosaje kukupenda kama umembariki hivi ulivyombariki he was doing fine Ayubu he was standing kile. firm alikuwa amefika kilele na wakati huo tu akiwa hata anaombea watoto wake mambo yale akampata and then disaster strike ziki kampata david after running away from soul he has ran amekimbia soul amemjificha and then finally he gets to a place of rest everything is doing fine he his friends with the philistines so we are not fighting anymore ndio mimi huyu wa filistu atupigani nimepewa katown kangu kanaitwa ziklag i am doing well i am standing firm and then disaster strikes his wife his children his property they are all taken and then the men who have also lost together with him turn on him disaster strikes again daudi alikuwa ametulia akafikiria ameshidana ametorokea saulo amepatiwa hata mji kila kitu kiko sawa lakini wakati huu kukakuwa na dhiki and then you remember a guy called daniel daniel wakati amefikiria sasa mimi ndio sonko huku babylon ndio huyo wakati ukafika wakurushwa kwa deni ya simba uh. and we could go on and on and on But the Bible is saying if you think you're standing firm. Because it is when we think we are standing firm that we need to be very vigilant. Because that is when disaster sana. When this happened, wakati haya maneno yalitendeka. I was standing firm in Nil, my view. Nilikuwa nimesimama imara. I was doing well in ministry. Maono yangu nilikuwa naendelea vizuri katika huduma yangu. I had engagements booked for the whole month of June. Nilikuwa nimepata kazi za mwezi mzima. I was on platforms that I never imagined I could. Hata nilikuwa na nena kwenye mother arm. I was back in school. Nilikuwa nimerudi shule. My life Uh, my lifelong dream was always to go back to school. I was in park nikisoma. Ah nilikuwa mtamerudi shule kusikuongeza masomo. I had great kids. Ah alikuwa na watoto wazuri. Watoto ambao wameokoka, wanampenda Mungu, wana watiifu. I I was living every woman's dream. Alikuwa anaishi maisha yale kila mama mama angekuwa anatamani. God was working miracles in classes where I was running. Mungu alikuwa anatenda miujiza kwenye alikuwa akifundisha. And you know I finally did not have to ask money from my husband because I was making a bit of my own. Alikuwa hautishi mzee um, wake pesa kwa sababu alikuwa anatengeneza pesa yake mzuri. And then my first born son not sasa mtoto was about wa... to graduate from a prestigious university. Mtoto wake alikuwa anaweza ku kuhitimu katika chuo ambacho nitakuwa 
Tulikuwa tumejiandaa kwa hiyo siku. We were so set for the graduation. Tulikuwa tumejitarisha kwa haya mahafala. That we had ordered rice Na tuli, from where. Tulikuwa tumeitisha mchele kutoka kule mwe. I had chicken that I had filled in a place. Nilikuwa nimejaza kuku mahali fulani. Because I was standing firm. Kwa sababu nilikuwa nimesimama imara. When disaster struck. Ah wakati thiki iligong. Then the thing I dreaded most happened. On that morning my son woke up very happy. Um, and those who had the privilege of knowing my son he had a bubbly personality. If you think I'm playful those who interact with me many times me I am a joke when it comes to what Derek was like. There was never a dull moment with that game. So he woke me up in the morning. He found me on my knees praying. And I was telling God, thank you for the fire you have brought me. Thank you for the amazing kids you have given me. Thank you for the joy you have put in my home. I had no prayer. I had just thanksgiving. And my son came into my room the second time and, and I was still on my knees and he called me, told me, mom, mina taka kuenda. And he was working somewhere uh, in his father's hardware. Alikuwa and I told him, nika muambia, sasa, kweni nisa angapi, I looked at my phone and nika muambia, ni mapema, it's 7.30, unaenda wapi saa hii, saa moja. Kaniambia, ah, uh, I like I told you he was very playful and my husband is a choleric ni wala watu kazi zao zifunguliwe saa ile inafaa so he said Mr. Kishida na bwana yako <laughs> and I told him ah hata kama we ni mapema so I told him hata umekunywa chai he told me hapana hakuna maziwa kamwambia fanya hivi let me get dressed nikuja nikupatie pesa uende maziwa alafu ukuja nikupikie chai tupige story saa ifike uende job and he, he was that, that kind of boy who never argued a lot. Alikuwa mtu ambaye si wa kuleta ugomvi. Kwa hivyo tukaenda mimi nikivaa nikampata kwa kio. He was admiring himself, looking at himself and then he was telling me mom ninakaje. Uh, posing looking in every direction and I told him unakaa poa. And then he had a kahia he told me unaona nilitoa kala kanyole ka uchokozi kalikuwa hapa. Na asked ka uchokozi Eh, and so we laughed. And finally, after a bit of negotiations, I gave him money and my son left. That was the last time I spoke to my son. Because just a few meters from our home, as he was crossing the road, kuenda kuchukua zile vitu nilikuwa nimemtuma, akagongwa na motorbike. Alipokuwa na pita barabara, aka and a few minutes later i went i was called i went and when i went to ruiru hospital i found my son I think he was just waiting to know that i know where he is before he left because i called his name and he tried to lift his head and produced a sound from his throat and he said ah and then his face fell back and he trusted like that two times and my son was gone. Akamuita, akatoa sauti, alafu akaanguka, ikawa amesha. Ivo tu. In a minute my life turned upside down. Kwa dakika moja maisha maisha yake yakageuka kabisa. In an instance my world came down. Ah, maisha yake yakawa ni kama yameangushwa. It's not only my faith that was shaken. Si mani yake peke yake ambayo ile my whole life ni maisha yake yote it was my dreams it was my plans nilikuwa mtango yake it was my hope ah uh, tumaini yake that went with him ikaenda na yeye i questioned god's fairness nikauliza mungu i questioned his love nikauliza i questioned his goodness nikauliza kama i wondered how he said he cared nikauliza ni kwa nini anasema ananijali but I never for a minute doubted his existence. Lakini sikuweza kushuku kama yeye yuko. Because yuko. even when my son was declared dead. Hata kwa bila wakati huyo kijana alisemekana amekufa. I lifted my hands and my head up and I asked God, why have you done this to me? 
akainua mikono yake akauliza Mungu kwa nini mmenifanyia hapo? Blame hai? the accident the road or the motorcycle rider. Sikulaumu hiyo njia ama huyu mtu alikuwa anaendesha bicycle. Because at 26 how many roads had he crossed? Kwa sababu katika miaka yake 26 ni alikuwa amepita barabara nyingi sana. I felt like Daniel in Daniel 9:12b. Akasikia kama Daniel katika Daniel who said that the whole world nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Akasema kwamba katika dunia mzima hakuna kitu kilishoitendeka kama kile kilitendeka kimetendewa Jerusalem. I remember telling people who listened Mungu amenifanyanisha hata sikunifanya amenifanyanisha kimadharau yani kunifanyanisha kikitu nikaonewa huruma na dunia mzima. I felt like job in job 711 nikahisi kama ayubu katika ayubu 7 mstari wa 11 therefore i will not keep silent akasema mimi sitanyamaza i will speak out of the anguish of my spirit nitaweza kunena kutoka kwa ule i will complain in the bitterness of my soul nitaweza kununguna kulingana na uchungu ambao niko nao na sisi there is a wrong doctrine that tells us mungu haulizwi maswali kuna ile mahubiri mabaya ambayo anasema Mungu hawezi ulizwa maswali. But he says come let's reason together. Lakini Mungu anasema kuja tukaweze kusemezana. Wrong doctrine tells us we cannot ask God questions. Ah ile mahubiri mabaya inasema ya kwamba huwezi uliza Mungu maswali. But countless of people who loved God asked him questions. Lakini watu wengi sana waliompenda Bwana walimuuliza maswali. Jeremiah wrote a whole book on lamentations. Jeremiah aliweza kuandika kitabu kizima cha maombolezo, akitetesha Mungu. Ruth in 120 says. Ruth Asura uh, kwanza mstari wa 20. Naomi said do not call me Naomi call me Mara. Naomi akasema msinite Naomi. Because the Almighty Mara. God has made my life better. Kwa sababu bitter. yule Mungu ameweza kufanya macho yangu kuwa mazuri. Moses got to told God kwani hawa watu ni mimi nilizaa. Hawa ni wangu hawa. David got to a place and it is recorded in the book of Psalms where he asked God is it in vain that I have served you Daudi akauliza Mungu katika Zaburi ni kweli nimefanya kazi bure ya kukupenda My son died on a Monday on Sunday I was on a pulpit um, preaching the word of God people gave their lives to Christ I had a couple seminar in the afternoon and the people were full of praises of how I had ministered hata wakati mbana, mtoto wake alikufa alikuwa anaendelea kuhubiri na watu wakapeana maisha yao kwa Bwana na watu walikuwa na ushuhuda vile Mungu ametenda Abraham asked God why are you blessing me unanipea nipeleke wapi na hujanipatia mtu wa kuridhi Abraham aliuliza Mungu kwa nini unanibariki na hata hujanipea mtu Because we are not called by God to a relationship of a slave and master but ah. to that of a daughter and his Uh, and, and, a, uh, and a father Mungu hata hajatuisha kwa kutuita kwa uhusiano uh, wa um, mkubwa na mtume. You know why the, the scripture we read is telling us that you are not alone is because sometimes you feel like what you're going through hiyo kitu unapitia wewe ni wewe peke yako unapitia. Um, Biblia inatuambia unafikiria kwamba Mungu ati hilo jambo unapitia ni wewe tu. Ni kama kuna wengine hawajawahi pitia hiyo kitu unapitia. In verse 13 Biblia inasema Mungu ni mwaminifu hata kuacha upitie majaribu ambayo hauwezi kuyastahimili. Someone said God entrust his bravest warriors with his fiercest battles. Mtu mmoja akasema kwamba Mungu anaweza kuwapitishia wale ambao wanaamini sana mambo yale magumu sana. Mungu anatupenda sana mpaka anapima majaribu ambayo anakuachilia alafu anakupima sijui scale inakaanga aje juu ningetaka kuwa hapo akinipimia unajua unaweza pimiwa useme we ah hebu pima tena maybe i would have bargained pengine ningeweza kujitetea mungu anatupenda ki, kiasi lazima apime ile kitu anakuachilia kabla kuachilia that is what scripture is saying Yo, that he will not allow you to take more temptation that you than you can bear. Anasema hata kuachilia ukapitie majaribu ambayo huwezi kabiliana nayo. I remember when I went to Daystar to collect my son's degree. Nilipoenda kuchukua kile cheti cha mtoto wangu. Because it's something I had prayed for. Kwa sababu ni kitu nilikuwa nimeombea sana. And I decided if this is the last thing I do for my son, I will go for that degree because he worked for it. Nikaamua kwamba kama ni kitu cha mwisho nitafanyia mtoto wangu nitaendea hilo cheti. I looked at all those children laughing and 
playing in their gowns. And I looked at all the mothers carrying the flowers they would put on their children. I sat there and cried bitterly. Mimi Unililishe wengine wakicheka. That is what I asked God. And I was serious. And I cried bitterly. Kwa and my daughter looked at me and she held me. Mtoto wangu, binti yangu wakani angalia kani And she shik. told me, mom, angalia wa mama tena. And I looked as I was crying and she told me, katia wa wa mama wote. Mungu wa meangalia kauna wewe tunjo unaweza. That was a word for me. And with that, I calmed down, I wiped my tears, and I told God, Nisawatu, Nisawatu. And with that, I walked to the podium. Nika, Bravely. Mbele, I went and took the degree. Nika, it's actually the VC who was crying. Ni, I was not crying. I had done my part. Whatever you are going through, God yeah. knows and that he can trust you with that kind of pain. He knows, he, he loves you so much that he knows that kind of pain is just enough for you. And it will take you to where God wants you. God loves you so much that he will allow painful situations in your life so that they can serve his purpose. And what are these purposes that God is allowing pain to serve in our lives? Painful trials allow God to display true faith to an unbelieving world. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 it says that we are Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Because Washua I think is the first person I told. Mungu amenifanya nishaji. Kunia nikia aibu kwa dunia muzima. God created a big cloud of witnesses. Mungu wakaleta mashahidi wengi sana. Mashahidi ambao wataona. Na washuhudie vile umefanyiwa. Kwa sababu mungu wanajua. Hata baada ya kukugonga hivyo. Utaeza kusimama tena. Na watu waone kuna mungu wanainua. Baada ya kuangusha. Amen. Wana sifiwe. Amen. So whatever. There is a rest that is marked out for us. That is what that scripture goes on to say. Kuna yale mashidano ambayo umewekewa. And God is trusting you. Na mungu anakuaminia. That the world will watch. They will see and they will glorify him. And you see we are not the only ones who are going through this. God put a pioneer ahead of us. So that he can show us by example how to handle pain. How to handle humiliation. How to handle shame. The world is watching and listening to your responses and your reactions. I saw people in my home I have never seen. And one of the things and those who are here and came to my home and slept like Beatrice slept there quite a few times because I could not sleep at night. I don't know where this came from, but I believe the Holy Spirit led me. I would go to the tent where people would meet. With my hymn books. When everyone else was asleep. And I would start with a prayer. And tell God you are not making sense to me right now. But I will sing to you anyway. And you know what? The people who are hearing me singing. They did not hear the argument we had when I was starting. 
hawakusikia yale matisha ya crowd of witnesses around you witnessing wale wa, wale watu mashahidi wanaweza kuchukua what you talk to god in your prayer closet let it be yours yale ambao unamwambia mungu mkiwa na yeye when you are going through trials lakini wakati unapitia majaribu god is entrusting you with that pain so that he can display to the world true faith mungu anakupitishia ule uchungu ndio akaweze kuonyesha imani ya kweli does it mean that i wasn't feeling anything i was manisha mimi sikuwa na hisi kitu chochote nilikuwa nimefungi to the road where my son was hit and i sat there at 3 am in the morning nilikaenda siku moja mahali kijana wangu alikuwa ni god hata mimi nitumie ingine inigonge nikaambia mungu because i did not know how i would go on after that sinkujua ninaweza endelea aje baadaye but i took my battles with god to the prayer closet nilienda nikaenda kubishana na mungu katika mahala pa maombi but when i came out wakati nilitoka pale and you people would come home na nyinyi mlikuwa mnakuja nyumbani i would even make you laugh nilikuwa hata nawachekesha but there was somewhere i was fighting my battle lakini kuna mahali nilikuwa napigana vita vya and god knows we are still at war sometimes na mungu anajua hata sasa hii bado tuko na katika vita kiasi and i say that my faith may have been shaken but it's not broken lakini nasema ya kwamba imani yangu ili ili tingizo lakini haikuvunjika believe in god's control or confess it is so loudly Ah ukaweza kuamini ya kwamba Mungu ako katika mamlaka because when you do that you're also telling yourself kwa sababu ukifanya hivyo hata wewe unajua one moment i kept re- repeating i kept saying this niliendelea kuambia Mungu kusema hivi in the beginning people would come and tell me god is good and in my heart i would go eh jua watoto wako wako wewe maisha yako iko sawa ndio unasema god is good and then i thought apana that is not nice nikafikiria hii verbalize it but that is what i was feeling in my heart singesema lakini hiyo ndio ilikuwa moyoni mwangu and i said god if this is the kind of pain i'm feeling there is no one who can heal me it's only you Uh, so i will say you are good even when i don't believe it nitasema wewe ni mwema kwa one day i will say it and in my heart i will believe that actually you are haka siku moja nitasema na kuamini ya kwamba ni hivyo number 2 in the fire we are refined katika cha pili ni kwamba katika moto tunaweza god loves you so much he will not leave you the way you are mungu anakupenda kiasi kwamba hata kuacha vile ulivyo he takes us through a refiner's fire anatupitishia ule moto wa kuweza kututengeneza na zingine hata sijui ni za kuchoma chuma <laughs> unajua moto ingine ni ya kuchoma makaratasi ingine ni kama ile ya kumelt chuma mi sijui basi nilikuwa na, mcha, na uchafu kiasi gani <laughs> But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is perfected in our most painful trials. Lakini matunda ya Roho Mtakatifu yanaweza kufanywa kukamilishwa If you see somebody who has the character of Jesus Christ. Kama ukiona mtu ako na tabia ya Yesu, ask them where they've been. Uwaulize wamepitia wapi? You know God fixes you at a place when you just watch because of the fire inside of you. You don't react. Ah, kwa sababu you learn humility. Ah uh, unakuwa umepitia moto kiasi kwamba unajifundisha unyenyekevu. You realize that joy is the fruit of the spirit happiness Una... is a result of happenings. Unajua kwamba hiyo furaha ni tunda roho mtakatifu. I had relatives who would come and comment things in my house. Nilikuwa na jamaa ambao walikuwa wanakuja kunena mambo katika nyumba yangu. And mimi ni mbaya. But I would look at them nilikuwa tunawaangalia tu and i became like david when he was being thrown out of his kingdom by his son Nika, and he met a guy called shimei nikakuwa kama daudi wakati alikuwa anatolewa mamlaka na mwanawe and shimei was throwing dust at david na, in his lowest moment akakutana na mtu ka, and when shimei alikuwa na wanted to, uh, to to attack shimei david told them wachana ni na yeye labda ni mungu amemtuma yani vile mungu amenifanya hata hizo zinatupwa ni mchezo tu hiyo vumbi wachana nayo hiyo wacha kushughulika nayo labda ni mungu amemtuma bwana asifiwe yani unajua kunyamaza mambo yanafanywa kwa nyumba yako unajiangalilia na macho kwa sababu ile uchungu unapitia ndani inafanya utu tu vita twingine tunakaa tutoto umepigwa kiboko ya sasa nitasema ni gani Yaani umegongwa na rungu alafu mtu anakuja anakuonyesha nyasi. Hmm? Si unamwangalia tu. Hmm? Because you you God just teaches you 
to be Christ like. Mungu anakufundisha kuwa kama Yesu. Watu wanakufanya mambo wanasema mambo mpaka eventually wanakuangalia wanasema kwa hiyo hata igua godo. Yaani kwani huyu asikiangi kitu. Because they have done their worst. Kwa sababu wamefanya yale mambo mabaya sana. And you're still standing. Na wewe bado unasimama. He removes he removes your selfishness and turns it into compassion. Anatoa ile hali ya kujipenda na ataweza pride and turns it into humility. Anatoa kiburi chako anaweza kukupatia unyenyekevu. He removes your happiness and gives you joy. Anatoa ile furaha yako anakupatia furaha. Painful trials can be used to take us to our destiny. Ah majaribu ambayo ni ya uchungu yanaweza kutufikisha kwenye hatima zetu. Our scars in God's hands turn into stars. Zile alama zetu Mungu anazifanya zikawa nyota. Si kumbuke ya Joseph. Ah uh, Yosef his pain turned him into a prime minister of a land. Alipitia uchungu mpaka akawa waziri mkuu. Naomi. Now she's in the lineage of Christ. Naye aliweza kuwekwa katika kile kizazi cha Yesu. Na Daud did je a fugitive. Mtu ambaye alikuwa anatoroka akikimbizwa na mfalme. Finally David becomes the king of Israel. Na Jesus rejected, despised, killed. But now there is no name greater than his. Yesu aliweza kutelekezwa na kuweza kuteswa lakini hakuna jina kubwa kuliko hilo. Romans 8:18 tells us. Warumi 18 mstari wa 18. Consider that our present sufferings. Naweza kuamini kwamba majaribu yetu are not worth comparing with the glory glory that will be revealed. Hayawezi fananishwa na utukufu ambaye utaweza kudhihirisha. Yaani God loves you so much. Mungu anakupenda kiasi kwamba that that pain will not be in vain. Huo uchungu hautakuwa wa bure. He loves you so much. Anakupenda kiasi kwamba that that pain will take you places you have never thought possible. Ya kwamba hilo uchungu utakufikisha mahali hujaweza fikiria unaweza fika. Most great ministries were born out of people's pain and suffering. Huduma nyingi zilizaliwa kupitia shida na uchungu wa watu wengi. How does God assure us of his love? Mungu anaweza kutuhakikishia upendo wake aje. Number 1 through his word. Dokezi la kwanza kupitia uh, neno lake. You know one thing I've discovered is that God will not say anything new. Zile vitu alisema siku ya Abrahamu, siku za Isaia na siku za Jeremiah. Hizo tu ndio anasema hata leo. Ndio kama Mungu asema azamaji kitu mpya, anasema vi, zile vitu tu alikuwa anasema zile siku za 3:14 to 16 says. Ayubu 33 mstari wa 16. God speaks. Mungu ananena. Now one way Uh, in dreams I, i wish they could uh, they could highlight it i only picked Oops. some highlights of Unaweza it pale kwa runinga. okay if it's not available i'll read what i have that god speaks now no. one way now another mungu ananena in kupitia dream, dream, moja ingine in visions in the night uh, when you are deep asleep wakati umelala he may speak in your ears anaweza kunenea kwa masikio or he may terrify you with his warnings ama anaweza kukutisha na zile ishara zake if you are seeking god god will tell you what is happening what is about to happen and what will happen in future kama unamtafuta bwana atakwambia ni nini kinatendeka sometimes you don't understand what god is saying wakati mwingine uelewi nini mungu anasema but god says in his word that he will not do anything without telling it to his servants lakini mungu anasema katika neno lake kwamba hatafanya jambo bila kuamini and there are no specific prophets na hakuna manabii sons and daughters of god we are all prophets in god's hands si ni wote ni manabii wa bwana So if you're seeking God God will inform you. Kama unatafuta Bwana atakufundisha. It may not make sense at that time. Inaweza kosa kueleweka wakati huo. But when what happens happens you will look back and say. Lakini oh, kile kinatendeka kikitendeka, utaweza kukumbuka lile ndoto. Oh, that thing she said. Kile kitu alisema. The day I was ministering was on 23rd. My son died on 24th. Uh-huh. After ministering in that church, a friend, a pastor friend of mine who we had gone to told me i feel like i want to pray for you and uh, i told her please go ahead nikamwambia ukaweza kuniombea tu ni sawa and before when i left the pulpit wakati nitoka pale madhabahu i'll tell you the message i preached on that nitakwambia ile ujumbe nilihubiri wakati huo i went outside and i felt my heart beat irregularly nikaenda nje nikasikia moyo wangu na ndunda ijia ingine ambayo si ya kawaida It bet in a way that I was telling that friend of mine it's painful am i having a heart attack nikamuliza mimi ni kama niko na mshtuko wa moyo it kept quiet 
Alafu ika, ika tulia moyo wangu. And now was ready to go home in the evening. Nilikuwa niko tayari kurudi nyumbani. I want to pray for you. Rafiki yangu akaniambia nitakuombea. In her prayer this is what she said. Akasema hivi katika maombi. Thank you because I see you taking Teresa to the media houses. And it's not going to be far off. It is in the near future. Nashukuru kwa sababu naona ukipeleka Teresa kwenye vyombo vya habari na nikaribu. Hivi kuonekana kwa TV my friend. Mimi huyo amen. Sikujua kwa TV nitaonekana nikifanya nini. But God had spoken. Mungu alikuwa amenena. The sermons I had preached in that month. Ah zile ujumbe nilikuwa nimehubiri huo mwezi. Were God's way of preparing my heart for what to come. Ilikuwa njia moja ya Mungu kunitaarisha kwa yale mambo. But for me lakini mimi nilikuwa nafikiria. Hivi ndio Mungu anataka kuambia watu wa voi. Hivi ndio Mungu anataka kuambia watu wa ngong. Hivi ndio Mungu anataka kuambia watu wa Kiserian. So in Voy I told them about Solomon's story. I told them about that lady those two prostitutes who one slept on the baby and the baby died. And I told them how sometimes our dreams, our visions, what is precious to us can be taken away from us. Nikamwambia kuhusu yale mambo ambayo tunapenda yanaweza chukuliwa kutoka kwetu. In Gong I told them about steps to greatness during their service and how God sometimes in the last step before he takes you to greatness he comes and takes what is most precious from you so that he can test your loyalty and see whether you will still be standing for him when he has taken that which you think is most precious on the 23rd the day that I was being prophesied to that I was going to the media houses I had preached about Hannah and I had told them how God has a sense of humor. Yaani anaambi Hannah anamwambia nitakupe. Na yeye Mungu anachukua tu na anachukua cha kabisa. Eh? Na anaacha Hannah anaenda nyumbani bila mtoto. And I told them sometimes God will take. Nikamwambia kama Mungu atachukua. What is most precious to you? Kile kitu unapenda sana, unadhamini sana because there is a greater blessing. Kwa sababu kuna baraka kubwa kushinda hiyo, anataka kukupata. And he needs to know that he can trust you to stay with him. Na anataka kujua ya kwamba anaweza kukuamini wewe ukakae ndani yake. Even after the blessing has come. Hata baada ya ile baraka kuja. Now God does nothing without informing us. Mungu hafanyi kitu bila kutuambia. It's just sometimes that we are not keen. Ni vile mtu wakati mwingine hatuwezangi kuelewa. Or sometimes we don't understand exactly what God is saying. But he loves us so much that he prepares our heart. And what an assurance when we have gone through what we are going through and remember imagine this is not taking God by surprise. God, my God is so great. He is so loving that he was in control even when this was happening. His word assures us that the eye is on the sparrow. That he cares for the details of our lives. He loves us enough to daily speak into our situations. Through his word. God assures us of his love through his peace and his joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Nehemiah Um, sura ya nane, mstari wa This day is a holy day. Uh, Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Kwa sababu mungu, and as I mungu. said earlier there is a difference between joy and happiness. Kuna tofauti ya furaha. Happiness is what happens when things are going right. And you are happy ni and, and, you can laugh, ya and you can smile and all is rosy. Unaweza furahi tabasamu na yote ni sawa. But joy. Lakini Joy is deep. Ile ni kitu cha ndani sana. Because it comes from deep inside. Inatoka kutoka kilimini. And everybody is wondering with all the things that are going on in your life. Mungu watu wanauliza mambo yale yote na anapitia. Na hiki kitu yote umegongwa wewe unacheka nini? Kwa mazishi ya mtoto wako how dare you crack a joke? Unawezaje kuleta mzaha katika mazishi? Because there is a joy that God gives you as an assurance of his love. Sababu kuna sifura ambayo Mungu analeta kama hakikisho ya upendo wake. Mpaka wewe saa zingine unatingisha kichwa unauliza yeye ni demo tuemwe. What is making me laugh? 
Why, why am I cracking this joke about this? But there is a joy that God avails to his children. That enables you to go through the most difficult circumstances. And that is an assurance of his love. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It comes from a heart that stops fighting with God. And accepts that even in this pain, even when I cannot understand, I will still surrender to you. That is joy. And that's the assurance that we get. One time I would kneel down and I remember oh, we, we have family devotions and my son, because he was such a joker, even during family devotions, he would do funny things and I would tell him, where watch mchezo. And then he would look at me and tell me, mom, unafikiranga mungu ana sense of humor. Hey, God has a sense of humor. Alikuwa mzaha na, mama aki alikuwa na mwambia achana na mzaha, lakini anauliza, unafikiranga mungu hakuangi hivyo wa mzaha. Because there are times I would kneel down even in my grief. Wakati ni kuna wakati ni kuwa napiga magoti yata katika ku in the darkest hour of my life. Katika uchungu huo, katika saa mbalo ni la uchungu. And I would tell God, I hope you are laughing now. Nambia mungu peng, na tumaini unacheka. And I would tell him, sasa untaka hata ni kuambia nini na bado utafanya vile unataka. Because I learned that God does have a sense of humor. And sometimes, he's looking at us. When I'm celebrating there, nimeambua naenda kwa media houses, na unacelebrate hapo na unambia mtu, imagine niliambiwa. A prophet spoke and God is laughing because he knows. Ile kitu inakuja wewe cheka tu. Wewe sherekea tu. Because God has a sense of humor. And because he does, he makes us laugh even in the darkest of our hours. Mungu anatufanya kutucheke hata wakati wa uchungu. And joy is contagious. Kwa sababu, nafuraha ni kitu ambacho kina samba. Joy keeps you sane and standing. Inakufanya ukue umesimama kamili na ukisimama. You smile and you are able to make other people smile. Unatabasabu, nakufanya wengine watabasabu. And that is how you know. Ndiyo unajua. That even in what I am going through. Even in those tears that I'm, that I'm still crying from the closet. Amen. Now God assures us of his love through his presence. In Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 2 God says. That when you go through those waters. Inasema tukipitia hayo maji. Hayata kumeza. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Continue verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. And we experience this kind of presence when we see his provision. God brings people to represent him in your life. He will send his own people to stand with you. We will experience that love of God if we maintain the right attitude. You will be assured of his love if you learn to appreciate the little things that are happening in your darkest times. I chose to go to Easter, collect the certificate, nikaenda nyumbani, nikashika gown, nikaimbia. Those who are at home, you remember that. I sang for my gown, na nikasema gown, niteno, muameo, nireko. Now we bought cake and we cut cake in the evening cake. and I decided I will celebrate Nika because God did it. My son died a graduate. M he was not about to graduate. Mahafali. Iyo clip ni evidence. At iyo kijana alikuwa na degree in mass communication from Daystar University. And I chose to celebrate that. I chose to appreciate 
the people God brought my way by choosing to interact with the people who came as many of them as I could. Niliweza kutangamana na wale watu ambao walikuja. I refused to hide myself in my room in my pain because I knew God may not speak from heaven with a thundering voice. Nikakataa kujificha katika chumba changu kwa sababu nilijua Mungu might come and say something that will dana, help me go through that day. Pengine dada anaweza kuja aniambie neno ambalo ningeniweza kukabiliana. I still appreciate the people who come my way. Na hata leo nafurahia wale watu ambao wanakuja kwangu. God gives us uh, his presence and assures us of his love by availing resources. Inaweza kuwa ni ugonjwa unapitia na katika huo ugonjwa it might be devastating but imagine god is providing pengine you are not kupi, struggling pengine unaweza pitia ugonjwa na mungu anakupatia anakupatia rasilimali za kuweza kukabiliana i chose to celebrate the little things that god was doing in Nika the most painful of my years. Uh, part of my years zile mambo ndogo ndogo zilikuwa zinafanyika wakati huo my son's burial was big ah uh, ile mazishi ya mwanangu ilikuwa ya kilele it it was huge ilikuwa kubwa zaidi people where we come from were saying kweni huyo kijana ni wa nani because kwenye tunatoka send people kwa sababu wa Mungu alituma maana na hata kama nilipitia uchungu ninajua kuna watu walipitia uchungu and they were still struggling to raise money for the coffin bwana asifiwe So God showed me his presence by making sure he availed all the resources available. Mungu aliweza kuleta rasilimali zote ambazo nilizita. I don't know what you're going through. Sijui unapitia hali gani. But hali even in that circumstance, Na look for something hali, to thank God hiyo. for. It has to be there. Imagine it is there. Ni lazima kuna kitu naweza shukuru Mungu juu yake. Because even in the worst of our situations. Hata kupitia hali zile mbaya zaidi. God loves us so much he will not leave us alone. Mungu anatupenda hivi kwamba hata tuacha kwa. And he will show up through people he will show up through resources that Ata come our way. kupitia watu kupitia rasilimali God assures us of his love as he continues to entrust us with responsibilities. Anatuhakikishia upendo wake kama uh, bila anaweza kutuaminia wajibu kadhaa na fulani. At your lowest moments. Wakati uko pale chini kabisa. When you feel weakest. Wakati unajihisi kwamba uko mnyonge zaidi. God might just surprise you like he surprised me. Mungu anaweza kukushtua kama vile aliweza kumshtua. When mom called me she was even talking like she's feeling guilty about telling me what the committee had sent her to tell me. Ah uh, wakati mama yangu alinipigia simu alikuwa anani anaogopa kuniambia vile committee ilikuwa imemwamua mama yangu. Maybe it's too soon. Pengine alikuwa anaona pengine nimemwambia kwa haraka sana. Maybe she has not healed. Pengine hata ajapona. By bringing someone sometimes who is in need your way. God is telling you I love you so much. I trust you so much that I know. Hata kwa hiyo hali unapitia. Imagine utasaidia huyu. Ah wakati mwingine Mungu analeta watu ambao wana mahitaji zaidi akisema ya kwamba hata katika hiyo hali kuna vile unaweza saidia mwingine. After the burial when everyone had left. Wakati mazishi liisha watu wakaenda. My daughter had gone back to school because she's in university. Hata binti yake akarudi shule akwa katika chuo kikuu pia. My husband's way of mourning was different. He chose ah. to go with uh, and sit near his his son's a grave bwana yake alikuwa anamomboleza njia nyingine kwa kukaa pale kwa I was left with my chickens and my pigs and a goat my cat and my dog akaachwa pale nyumbani na wanyama wale paka and I had no one to talk to na hakuwa na mtu wa kunena na yeye in the morning i would wake up and take my sons photograph. Alikuwa anaamka asubuhi anachukua picha ya mwanawe and only the walls of my house can tell you the screams I would scream in that. Na zile kuta za nyumba yake ndio tu zinaweza kuambia vile aliweza kutoa sauti. To act brave and tell you that I still don't. My daughter knows. The many times she has come to my son's room and found me holding to his t-shirt and wailing. Amekuja kwa chumba cha mwanangu akanipata nimeshika nguo yake nikilia. There are times I go to his bed. Wakati mwingine naenda kwa kitanda chake. To smell him one last time. Kumu kuhisi ile hisia yake mara nyingine moja. And I thought let me do this. Na nikasema pengine nifanye. Let me get away and go to heaven's gate. And pengine niende pale kwa maombi, mahala pa maombi. And my son used to go to to prayer in heaven's gate many times. Ah, yule mwanangu alikuwa anaenda pale mahali pa maombi. When I went there 
and I'm there asking God questions. Na, nilikuwa pale nikiuliza Mungu maswali. God tells me about somebody. Mungu ananiambia juu ya mtu fulani. And God tells me tell this person this. Akaniambia enda umwambie mtu fulani hivi. And I told God mimi sijakuja hapa stories za wenyewe. Hii ni mimi na wewe. <laughs> settle me first before you send Uka me to settle other people. Kia mimi na wewe. Hii ni mimi na wewe. But you know what God has been teaching me? Na Mungu amekuwa akinifundisha haya. That sometimes God wants you to heal as you help others. Na Mungu anataka ukapone wakati unasaidia as you heal other people. Anataka upone pia wewe ukiwa unapona wengine. Don't waste your pain. Usiweze kupoteza uchungu wako. Look out for opportunities to stand with other people in your pain. Tafuta nafasi ya kusimama na watu wengine katika uchungu wako. When God loves you so much that he's showing confidence in you wakati, by sending you wakati, you are there giving excuses wakati Mungu anaonyesha ujasiri kwako kwa sababu anakutuma wewe unako hapa pa kukipatiana viji sababu my relationship with God is funny because he deals with me knowing that he created a kichwa ngumu in me um, <laughs> Uhusiano wangu na Mungu ni wa ajabu kwa sababu Mungu anajua mimi ni mtu mgumu na anashughulikia hivyo. Today I, I woke up feeling anu, I woke up went to work came back home and I don't know whether it's the anxiety of just standing on the altar. I came back home and my stomach was running seriously. Ah uh, nilikuja nilienda kazini alafu nikaja na nikaanza kusikia kama siko mzuri wa afya kabisa. And in fact the more the hours moved the more the stomach became worse. Vile masaa yaliendelea ah ile tumbo ikaendelea kwa mbaya zaidi. But flies za kawaida naendesha. And then I told my daughter ama nipige simu. Pastor Alisa jipange. <laughs> and my daughter told me utamezwa kama jona <laughs> nikamwambia huku hakuna samaki akaniambia utamezwa na taylor taylor is our cat nikamwambia nitatoshia kwa tumbo ya taylor but of course i knew that god was saying you need to go Anili. i send you i'm not changing my mind nilikuwa najua mungu alikuwa ananiambia ni lazima uende sijabadilisha lile neno nilisema God loves us so much that even in our pain we can be vessels in his hands. Mungu anatupenda kiasi kwamba hata wakati wa uchungu wetu tunaweza kuwa vyombo. Like a broken pot in the hands of a of a king. Kama vile chungu kilichovunjika mikononi mwa mfalme that he can deliver what he wants through you. Anaweza kuwasilisha kile anataka kupitia wewe. So we heal as we help and heal other people. Tunapona tukiendelea kusaidia wengine wakapona. Isaiah 58 verse 6 to verse 9. Isaiah uh, 58 verse 10 to 11. And verse 10 to 11. Amstari wa 10 mpaka wa 11. In fact verse 10 says if you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. Ukiweza kushughulikia mahitaji ya wale hawana uh, chakula. Then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. Nuru yako itaweza kuonekana pale gizani na usiku wako utakuwa kama mchana. There are times I'm still going and being called by people. Kuna and sometimes somebody is calling me when I'm in my son's room because that's where my prayer closet is nowadays. Wakati mwingine watu wanakulia ninalia alafu hii simu inakuja. Nikamwambia Akitriza I need your help. And na wewe unalia. Wewe unalia na mtu anakwambia una Kwa hivyo anapanguza machozi yangu na sema <laughs> And as I have done that I, and seen God use me to minister to someone else and that person is able to stand again imagine that joy that comes from seeing that you have been of help to someone else has been helping me to heal out of my own pain Napanguza machozi naendelea kusaidia mwingine So I don't know who God is saying this to this day Sijui Mungu ananenea nani. Say, I love you enough to trust you with my work. I love you enough to trust you with my people. Nakupenda kiasi kwamba nitakuachia kazi yako. He knows your situation. He knows what you're going through. Anajua hali yako, anajua unapitia mambo gani. But he's saying I will heal you as I use you to heal others. Anasema kwamba nitakuponya nikiendelea kukutumikia. And I wind up. Napotamatisha. I would like the projection of Isaiah 30 verse 18. Ningetaka utuwekee pale Isaiah 30 na mstari wa 18. I know this is what God is saying because I have been hearing him say it to me. Ninajua ni hili ndilo neno Mungu anasema kwa sababu nimehisi God knows you are hurting. Mungu anajua kwamba unaumia. God sees your secret tears. Mungu anaona machozi yako kupale. That thing you have not shared with anyone else. God Kile knows kitu you're going mtu to mwingine. Mungu anakijua. But he's assuring you that he knows you by name. 
anakuambia ya kwamba anakujua kwa ajili and he longs to be gracious to you anatamani sana kuwa kwa neema kwa god kwa. wants to show you his compassion mungu anataka kukutunza and in this year of restoration god is saying na katika huu mwaka wa urejesho bwana my daughter you have wept but you will weep no more binti yangu umelia lakini hutalia tena i will answer you when you call nitaweza kukujibu wakati utaniita I have given you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction. Nimeweza kukupatia mkate wa shida na dhiki. We have mourned, we have lost, we have been ashamed, we have been humiliated, we have been tumeibishwa, hurt. Tumehisi uchungu. But God allowed it. Lakini Mungu aliruhusu haya for his glory and for our growth. Ndio utukufu wake na ndio tukaweze kukua. And God is here ready to bind our bruises. Lakini Mungu ako hapa akiwa tayari kutuweza kutufunga vidonda vile. And to heal the wounds he has inflicted on us. Akuweza kutufunga vile na kuponya vidonda ambavyo ambavyo tu. And I just want us to take a moment as we stand on our feet. Nataka tukasimame na tukaweze kuchukua fursa. And I want us to rise up and surrender that pain. Na tunaweza kusimama na kuachilia ule uchungu that hurt ukaweze kuwasilisha huo uchungu kwa Bwana ask god to heal you and fill you with his joy uliza mungu akakuponya na kukujaza kwa nafasi yako the happenings yake. may not change so don't expect happiness mambo mengi uh, pengine hali haitabadilika wakati huu huu And I don't know whether the worship team is here so that in the one minute we can sing a chorus and just respond to what god is saying to your heart